we're doing we're back on the engine assembly for the odd rod and today we have uh, checked our main bearing clearances and decided uh, which set of bearings we needed uh, we, we are having to go with a set that has an extra thousandth of oil clearance to get everything where we wanted it and we've got that in where everything's nice and smooth we also discovered in the process we're getting here a little closer this particular crank has eight throws which is a little different than a, a stock small block forward and uh, we actually have a couple spots even though it's not a stroker crank or anything like that we had a couple spots that were uh, one spot actually was hitting uh, down in here and then we've got some areas where we're gonna have to go back in and do just a little bit of touch-up grinding to get the uh, desired 60 thousandths clearance for the crank throw so it's got to come back apart do a little grinding and, and final cleaning before it all goes together but uh, we also checked our uh, thrust which is the the motion of the crank back and forth we checked that to make sure it was okay it's within spec and then while we've got it up here we're going to indicate our bell housing it's a lot easier to do that with a block up on the table than it is doing this after it's in the, the truck and uh, what we're doing indicating a bell housing is we want to make sure that this opening in the bell housing is as centered of the center line of the engine as possible. If it's not, when you put the, the transmission in, um, the input shaft is actually going to be going around, you know, egg-shaped. And at 9,000 RPM, that does destructive things. It'll wear out uh, pilot bushings and, you know, bend stuff, break stuff. So. Uh, anytime you get a new bell housing like this, you want uh, to check it. And they're usually pretty close, but actually this one was off. And uh, we've already got it dialed in. I just kind of wanted to show you the setup. Um, how you adjust them is the two dowel pins that the bell housing fits on. You can buy uh, dowel pins that are offset. And these have a hex, place for a hex key in them. And you can actually rotate them and scoot the bell housing a little side to side or up and down and check your indicator so if you'll come in here and look what what we do you have to put a magnetic base inside on a flywheel and we're just using a mock-up flywheel because um, we run an aluminum flywheel so this is just a stock steel flywheel we've got a magnetic base on it <clears throat> and then you put an indicator to where when you spin the the crank the indicator is running along this edge and before you check it, you also want to take some sandpaper and lightly sand this edge because ours had powder coating halfway around, just a little thin film, you could feel it. So you want to get all that cleaned off where you're down to, to smooth metal. And I can't show you the entire rotation because you'd have to be upside down, but you, you can get an idea. You can see the indicator move a little bit. And we got this one well within spec. Um, they've got to be... Um, 10 thousandths total uh, in, a, in a complete revolution, and that's actually five thousandths out. And that's the maximum that you can have, and we ended up uh, at about uh, seven thousandths, which is three and a half thousandths out. So uh, I'll take that, no problem. So that's the process. You can see that just follows, follows that opening. So anyway, that's what we're doing, and uh, we'll continue on. Uh, next step will be uh, after we get this block clearance some more, then we'll be working on fitting uh, rods. Okay, we're back to uh, engine assembly on the uh, new engine for the odd rod. And uh, we've got all our block clearanced and cleaned and deburred and checked and cam bearings are installed. Uh, so it's ready just for a final wipe down in the cylinders and everything can start going together. Uh, we've got Miss Sadie the Hound Keep an eye on things today. Uh, I'm working on getting uh, the pistons on the rods. Uh, just finished, uh, just finished that up. Um, getting the uh, pins lubricated and getting the round wire locks put in, which is always fun. Uh, that's you need nimble fingers for that. Uh, the next step, uh, these rods come, of course, with the the bolts tight, and uh, we need to get the uh, caps separated. We've already got that one apart. We've got uh, rod bearings laid out. And the reason I've got these laid out like this, we're having to do a split set 
where um, one shell is a thousandth extra oil clearance and the other shell is a standard. And that's what it took to get our target of uh, two and a half thousandths oil clearance. So I've got those laid out uh, in order so uh, I won't mix those up. And uh, you have to take two sets of bearings to make that. And now we have, of course, another spare set on the shelf. And we've got piston rings. Uh, piston rings are already filed. They've already been filed and they're marked like that one's, you know, out of cylinder number five. So those are ready to go. <clears throat> and over here, got the got a rod up in the rod vise and uh, we use that to break the break the bolts loose and then uh, I'm gonna do that and then I'll show you what we do to uh, separate the, the rod cap okay I can't really do this and video but I'll show you uh, the tool you do it with it's this device here and it's got uh, soft corners and you put that in and as you as you turn it as you rotate the screw this separates you can see it's getting wider and when you have that inside, it, it will gently spread the cap. Um, so that's that's a lot better, you know, in the old day when we didn't have those tools, you know, you'd have to clamp it up in the rod vise and you, you could take a dead blow hammer and uh, hit the bolts and pop them loose, but it's just a, it's just a little more gentle on them to have the, have the correct tool. But that's, uh, I think, called a, a rod splitter. So anyway, uh, we'll continue on from here. Okay, we've got our crank in and uh, all the mains torqued. Rear main seal in. And it feels absolutely wonderful. I never get tired of the way these crankshafts feel when you first get them put in and everything is right. I just, I'm amazed that machining can be that precise. Uh, but they really do feel good. Um, We've got, got the crank in, everything's torqued. Uh, we've got five thousandths of crank in play, which is just excellent. Um, got the cam in, uh, cam gears on. We've got uh, six thousandths of in play on the crank. And that's with a Torrington bearing. We've got a, a thrust bearing on each side of the cam plate. And uh, it feels wonderful. So um, anyway, it's now time to uh, start putting uh, rings on the pistons and start uh, filling the holes. We're now gonna check our uh, ring end gap and these have been filed, uh, they're filed to fit. So what we're gonna do, start it in the bore. We got this tool I had a friend of mine make for me. You can buy these, whatever, but it puts the ring square in the bore. You can reach in and feel of it, pull it out. Zoom in right there on that gap, Ben. And come in with a feeler gauge. And read your feeler gauge. And that's your end gap. And that's all there is to it. All right, what are so you doing, Ben? We're installing rings on the pistons. Okay. Why is that a big deal? Don't you just put them on there? Just well, they've got any, to, any old way? Well, they've got to be you know, orient, orientated the way that you know, the ring manufacturer tells you to. So, like you can't have all your gaps lined up, otherwise you're gonna have you know, blow by and, and leakage. So. Okay. So we're just kind of going off of this, you know, what they're telling us to do. I'm doing the, the control, oil control rings now. So, you, you know, you set your compression ring where it, it's facing on this side of the piston. Then you, you mean your expander, your, your expander, expander ring. ring, yeah. So the bottom one will go here. So I'm just gonna okay. put one side in. This one's kind of tricky. You roll it around. Try not to kink it. Yeah. Too bad. Try to get it underneath. And and you don't do the top rings by hand, right? No, I, we have a tool for that. Yeah. You can do it by hand, but well, it's yeah, a lot easier you, without. Yeah, you you really shouldn't. It's easy to. There's been a lot of them put on by hand over the years, but there's also been a lot of rings broken, but, but these, uh, these little oil control rings, no big deal to, no, to roll those on. on. Yeah. 
And then you can kind of just check, make sure they're all still lined up correct, which they are. Now, are those gaps going to stay at that spot when the engine's running? Realistically, no. They're, they're going to they're going to constantly move around, but but we assume they never line themselves up. Right. So now we can do our our actual, you know, top and bottom ring. Okay, and that tape that tape's on there because that ring has already been filed yeah. for that cylinder. Yeah, so Chris, our machinist, has already done, has already set these gaps and he's labeled which cylinder they're in and they're labeled, so right. I'm pulling those off and laying them here so I know which ones I've done. And we can do that in house, but uh, we he's just, a lot better at it. We discovered that uh, a man with an automatic ring filer that does it every day, uh, it's just hard to be paying him to do it instead of doing a hand filer. But it, it's good to be able to do that because sometimes you're in a pinch and you're fixing an engine on a weekend and you need to touch up a ring gap or do something, and you know you can do them by hand. It, it takes. I don't know. I think the last set we did, it took maybe a couple of hours to, to hand file yeah. them and we're slow. Well, you got to go slow. Yeah. It's just, you can, you can make a mess. It's a tedious process. Okay. So what are you doing now? Yeah. So I'm doing this bottom compression ring and this one has a, a specific cut. So this one's a Napier cut. You probably won't be able to see it on camera. No. But, um, so I just got to make sure that that's facing down and then according to my chart, put this in the ring spreader and it goes on this side. Set the back side in. These are easy. Yeah, I think these are um, what, two millimeter rings. I haven't even looked. They're they're a little thinner. They're a little thinner than what we'd run. Yes, yeah, so they're they're nice and easy. Same then your top ring goes opposite of your bottom. Set that in. Put that one out. Try to try to pop out. Okay. All right, so you double check, make sure everything's still sitting right, and move on to the next one. Okay. That's all there is to it. Yep. So what we're doing here is wiping down the cylinder bores one final time before we get to install pistons, and we're wiping them down with lint-free cloths and transmission fluid, and you can see how it'll pick up just a light amount of uh, machining residue. And we've been going back over them multiple times. And we'll do the same thing in the lifter bores with our, with our finger and some automatic transmission fluid just to get that last little bit of cleanliness. here it's a ring compressor for the correct bore those things are so nice we got our bearings and bearing shells installed in each rod these are also a very handy thing they're just a friend of mine made them for me out of aluminum we've already oiled this particular cylinder That's good. And we've already got three, three in and torqued and we checked our rod bolt stretch with a stretch gauge um, prior to assembly and found what the torque was 
Well, they actually give you a, a range, a torque range and a stretch range from the rod manufacturer. And uh, so we decided what torque we wanted that got us the stretch. And we're torquing all the bolts based, based on our findings there. Ben and I were just talking about this uh, speed handle. Ben loves speed handles when it comes to putting engines together. And uh, this, was, this was my dad's speed handle. So we're kind of using it today. Thinking about him, he's been gone about 25 years and he would have uh, he would have loved this. His blood ran forward blue and he never got to do anything this exotic, but uh, he would have really enjoyed it. Sneaking up on the torque. And then after every piston and rod, we spin the engine to make sure we didn't pick up any kind of a obstruction or any you know anything that felt tight and it feels just silky smooth so that's how that's how you do it uh, times eight okay we got the bottom end put together uh, the oil pan is just stuck on it it's not sealed up we just put it on to keep dirt and everything out uh, in case we were have to, to have to go back in and look at something and check or change something, but it all went together good. We've degreed our cam, uh, numbers came up good, um, at least at this point. Um, once we get the heads and check piston to valve clearance, there's always possibility we might have to scoop the cam forward or advance to make a little difference in the uh, valve to piston clearance to get you out of a tight spot, so to speak. But anyway, so that's where we're at. Um, we are three weeks away from the next Southeast Gassers event at Shelby, North Carolina, Shadyside Dragway. Uh, we're going this Tuesday to Indiana to One Way Technologies to pick up our cylinder heads and intake. And then the fun will really start getting the uh, valve train checked and uh, set up. And the last, last piece of the puzzle will be to order push rods once everything is mocked up. And hopefully we can be on the dyno two weeks from today and then it'll give us a few days to put it in the truck and have it ready uh, for Shady Side.